so uh, till now we have learned about one of the ways in order to travel graphs right or to traverse the graph or to read the graph now we are going to look another way in which we can travel or traverse the graph this is called as breadth first search right we have already discussed about depth first search uh, a lot of you guys might be already aware about breadth first search but uh, it would be uh, good if we can have a brief discussion around what exactly happens behind uh, breadth first search what are some observation that we can uh, directly derive from breadth first search and so on and so forth okay so breadth first search what breadth first search says that it is quite different from depth first search in the sense that in depth first search what we do is whenever we have a node we go to it, one of its neighboring nodes and then recursively explore the whole neighboring node right but that's not the case with breadth first search so let's just see now what we can say is that let's say we keep this as the reference node we keep node 1 as the reference node and what we say is the node with number 2 and the node with number 4 both of these nodes are at the same distance from the reference node can i say that if 2 and 4 both of them are on the same distance from the reference node then we say that both of them are on the same level so in order to display the same level i am drawing this black dotted line now let's just see one more thing the node number 3 and the node number 5 when we say what is the distance of 5 from the reference node now the distance can be this also and the distance can be this also so we can, we will be taking shortest possible distance so here you can see the node 5 is having two unit distance from one similarly 3 is also having two unit distance from one so the node 3 and node 5 are having same distance from the reference node again so these two are again going to be on the same level and similarly node 6 and 7 are with the same distance same shortest distance from the reference node so 6 and 7 are also on the same level now you might be thinking why i am exploring these levels the main reason why i am exploring these levels is because of the fact that in breadth first search we say that if we start from one node which is the reference node the neighbors which are at the same level the neighbors which are at the same level are going to be read together like 2 and 4 will be read together till the time you have completed reading this particular level you won't start with any other node of any other level i hope this point is clear so till the time you are reading 2 and 4 that this level completely rest of the nodes are never going to be read this is what is the essence of breadth first source that means that from the reference node in breadth wise manner right or expansion in all the possible direction expansion wise manner you are going to your neighboring nodes the nodes which are at the same distance from the reference node are on the same level and in the breadth first search or in the breadth first uh, traversal they are going to be read together right this is the one of the main important aspects of breadth first search that makes it different from depth first search in depth first search what we were doing if we were at 4 uh, if we, if we went from 1 to 4 then from 4 we are going to visit the neighbor of 4 not the neighbor of 1 the neighbor of 1 will wait but here what will happen is all the immediate neighbors of 1 which are at the same level are going to be read together then the next nodes are going to be read then the next nodes are going to be read of the next level so on and so forth right so if i write the breadth first traversal of this particular graph this is going to be 1 4 2 now 4 2 2 4 same thing no issues because the nodes which are on the same level le level can be in any permutation based on how you have added them in the graph so this can be 1 2 4 also 1 4 2 also anything works but the same level should be together then 3 5 then 6 7 and this is the breadth first traversal of our given graph right so you can see that it is significantly different from depth first search if, if if we would have gone with depth first then it would have been 1 4 3 2 5 6 7 but here we have 1 2 4 3 5 6 7 right this can be 2 4 or 4 2 also this can be 3 5 or 5 3 also this can be 6 7 or 7 6 also 
like each level can be in any permutation possible now the question that arises is that how to actually calculate the breadth first traversal of a graph now the main thing that we have to take care about is the main thing that we have to take care about is to make sure that the neighbors which are getting visited first the neighbors which are getting visited first should be treated first like your immediate or we can say the neighbors which are closer the neighbors which are nearer to the reference node or come first with respect to the neighborhood of the first node should be treated first and if i am going to apply some first come first serve kind of a strategy then the data structure that i might require in order to solve this breadth first search is the one that is going to support fcfs that is first come first serve and what is that data structure yes you guessed it right queues this is queues so you can maintain a normal queue and then what you can do is you can first insert your reference node so you inserted one then what you can do you can mark the inserted node as visited right this yellow marker is making it visited then what we can do is one by one we will remove the entries from the queue so we remove one from the queue we print one and then we will add the immediate neighbors of one which are at the same distance so immediate neighbors are at the same distance so 2 and 4 will be added so 2 got added 4 got added and 2 marked visited 4 marked visited we will never add an already visited element i'll show you later so now 2 is removed we print 2 and then the neighbors of 2 are 5 So we add five and three. So we add three, right? So this also marked visited. This also marked visited. Okay. Now four is removed. We print four and now just think about it. The neighbor of four are what? Three and one. Three is also already visited. One is also already visited. That means from four, we are not going to have access to any of the children that has not been yet visited. So four will be done. Now we remove five. From five, we have six and seven getting added. So we will mark six and seven already visited uh, from five. Then we are going to access three. We will print three. Then from three also, two is already visited, four is already visited. Nothing can be done, right? And so on and so forth, right? So I guess I missed one five. I guess here five, then three. Then we will remove six. then we'll remove 7 none of the 6 and 7 has got any unvisited node and this is the bread first traversal so this is what is the gist of the bread first traversal you are never going to visit any already visited node and the nodes that you are visiting you will be always visiting them in the shortest possible manner in an unweighted graph so this is an unweighted graph right this is an unweighted graph so in an unweighted graph you can carefully see that Five was at a distance. This one also, and five was at a dis distance two also. But we considered the shortest distance. So using breadth first search, whenever you are traveling from the reference node to any other node, you always and always travel with the shortest path. So in breadth first search, whenever we travel. from reference node to any node right then it always considers shortest path so in an unweighted graph just this is something that you have to keep in your mind in an unweighted graph if you want to calculate the shortest path between two points then you can definitely use breadth first search this is going to be really really helpful for you now what is the time complexity of the breadth first search the time complexity is every node is getting touched only once and every edge is going to be touched only once right because you can see every node you are inserting in the queue once and removing in the queue from the queue once you are not repeating your iteration again and again on any node that means the overall complexity will be order of v plus e that is all the uh, i would say vertices and all the edges the space complexity will also be order of vertices in the case because uh, we are maintaining an extra arbitrary queue apart from it so this was uh, 
all the discussion around breadth first search. I hope this point is overall clear to you that what is the time complexity, what is the space complexity, what is the intuition behind breadth first search, what is different in breadth first search, how to actually uh, work on breadth first search, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now let's just start uh, implementing breadth first search. So before implementing breadth first search, first of all, let's just create our graph. So I'll make a vector of list of integer graph and I'll, I'll write a function void bfs right and from the bfs what we can do we can pass the source that is the reference node we can say in source what we need to do we need to make a queue right so std queue int right we have made an int queue then we'll do queue dot push we'll push the source node or the reference node We'll also make a visited vector, so std vector of bool visited, right? And this visited is going to be, let's say, we'll pass int v, that is the number of vertices, it will be equal to the number of vertices and all initialized by false. Then we can do visited of source equals to 2, right? This is going to be the initial setup where we have added the reference on the root node into our queue. Then while not q dot empty till the time the q doesn't become empty, what we are going to do? We'll first of all do int current is equals to q dot front. Then we'll do q dot pop. That is, we'll access the element in the front of the queue. Then what we are going to do? We can just print stdc out current. Right. And the moment you have removed this, now what you can do is you can go to all the neighbors of the current node. So for auto neighbors in G of current node, what you can do? You can check if the neighbor is not visited. If not visited neighbors, if the current neighbor is not visited, let's keep it singular. If the current uh, neighbor is not visited, what we are going to do? We'll mark the neighbor visited and do a push of the neighbor. Right? We'll push the neighbor inside our queue. Right? And at last, yeah, I guess uh, we don't need to do anything further. So now what we can do is I can bring some test cases from here. Let's say this, let's bring this. Okay. And we'll just call BFS. Right. And the first argument is the source. So let's say source node is going to be the zeroth node. And uh, number of nodes is going to be V. Okay. This is going, going to be uh, one part. And let's then just bring the input. So let's make a new file input.txt. We paste the input, and if we'll try to run the code, uh, let's see. Okay, it has completely run, and in the output, you got 0, 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 6. So if you see it here. If you see zero based indexing, then zero, one, and then we have three. So four became three, that works fine. Then three became two, five became four, so two, four, and then five, six, which becomes six, seven. And this is the coding implementation for the bread first search, one of the very easiest implementation in graph algorithms. Later, we are going to learn about uh, algorithms like Dijkstra which will be an kind of like an optimization on BFS only. There will be dedicated problems around BFS that we are going to discuss it further. And again, that space complexity, the time complexity is order of V plus E, order of V plus E, and space is order of E. I hope this uh, coding implementation is clear to everyone. So that being said, we will meet up in the next video. Till then, take care guys. Bye-bye. Have a great week ahead and love you all.